In this video, we'll look at exception handling in JShell. We're going to open a new session. And uh, here, I'm going to create an expression that throws an exception. So let's say I do a 1 divided by 0. This should give an arithmetic exception thrown to divide by 0. So what's happening here is a statement that I've entered, an expression that I've entered, throws an exception. JShell is catching that exception and displaying a message here about what that exception is. This is pretty handy. You also have this line number indicator, which tells you what line caused that exception. So in this case, in the case of JShell, this is line number one because it is command number one. So if I were to do a dash slash list, you see this is command number one, and that's what is indicated in this exception. And now that you know these commands translate to lines in the Java class, which we've covered in the last video, which I hope you watched in its entirety, you know that these line numbers translate to line numbers in the generated Java class. So that's the reason why this kind of works together even in that context. So that's what's happening here. Whenever there's an expression that throws this exception, that's the number, the line number that gets displayed in JShell. This could be inside a method as well. So let's say I do a int divide, which takes in two integers, which returns divide a by b. This is, of course, not the right way to do a divide method. There are a lot of edge cases that this is ignoring. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind, the edge case that it's not handling, is the divide by zero. So if I were to say divide of one and zero, this is going to cause a divide by zero. And uh, if you see here, you get kind of like a stack trace, where you have the exception thrown in the divide method line number two because this is the line number two which declared this method and then again the next step in the stack trace is line number three which is the execution of this method now let's say i want to add exceptions over here like i want to throw an exception and let's assume it's a checked exception i'm going to re-declare this method int uh, divide which is going to check if b equal to zero is going to throw I'm just going to throw a random check, checked exception. IO exception should be fine. Though you don't want to be doing IO exception when you're checking for zero here. But let's say I do this, right? And then I return A divided by B. Now notice what happens when I do this. The JShell parser is going to detect that I'm using a checked exception. And it says my method should declare or catch this exception. I cannot just throw it when it's a checked exception. So let's say I do that, right? So I'm gonna go back here and then throws IO exception and the rest of the code is gonna remain the same. All right, so now I'm able to successfully create this divide method. Now, if you were to call it in the main method, you're going to have to handle that exception in a typical Java program. But here, I don't need to. So let's say I do 1 and 0 here. Now, I'm going to get an IO exception here, which is what is the checked exception that this method throws. But then again, I can leave uh, I can leave this to JShell to handle it. Now, JShell is going to give me this kind of like stack trace, a string representation of this exception, which is uh, which is easy to look at and read. And uh, this, is, um, this is one way in which it makes things a little bit easier to deal with exceptions. You don't have to catch each and every one of them when you're creating these methods which throw checked exceptions. Except for that, uh, for the most part, exceptions work just like in, in a typical Java program. Uh, but just want to let you know that this is the way in which you see it in JShell because it handles any exceptions that you don't handle and then it gives you this nice string representation of it.